Every one of his fingers, an open mouth, his mouth a beautiful confusion of fingers, slowly and patiently sealing each of the places that men pry open again and again with their unthinking vows of love. because I'm touched by my own world. <laughs> you should be. Comes from about five or six years of reading in smoky bars. Uh, this is called Say Can You See? And this was written after a visit uh, to New York City uh, where we were eating in a cafe that was real close to Tompkins Square Park before they uh, forced the homeless out of the park. And I just stood there for a while and looked at uh, just acres upon acres of people living out in the open. Uh, and while I was watching, the sound of the Star Spangled Banner came over a transistor radio. I don't know if it was a beginning of a baseball game or what. And there was this one man in front who just kind of stood up and he stood there until the Star Spangled Banner was done and then he sat back uh, under his tent. So this is for him. <coughs> oh say we've seen too much. The star-spangled banner pushes like a cough through America's mouth, and the twilight's last gleaming is just that, a sickly final flash above our heads, as we ride unsuspecting in the bellies of old trains, plop to our knees in churches to embrace truths that disgust us, as we tumble beneath tangled sheets, judging and savoring the skin of our lovers, silently comparing their delinquencies to our own. What so proudly we wail the anthems of AM radio, electric rhythms siphoned from black boys on the streets of Roxbury. What so proudly we wail those instant grade school stanzas praising wheat fields we have never seen. What so proudly we wail each precise and stagnant chant we have been taught, pledging allegiance with misty eyes, hands slapped over our blubbering hearts. What so proudly we fail to wail our frantic verses of no, damn it, no more. What so proudly we fail to hear it, the song we really need to sing. Great gulping syllables, off target, off key, loud enough to shake the dust off cities. A song cluttered with impossible chords and sour obscenities, brash and crazy beautiful in the air. But this is not the song that snakes through us as our hungry mouths move once again into praise mode. And how wonderfully that thin, tinny melody is pulled through the air. And the man who wears his body on his back, who carries his clothes in his hair, feels his switch flipped. And God bless this goddamn America as it seems he is standing forever. Ever up, up. This is uh, one of my doom and gloom poems. Mm. Uh, yeah, I tend to write a lot of poems based on newspaper headlines, and since most of the news is bad, most of the poems are doom and gloom. I'm from Chicago, and there was a case in Chicago a couple of years ago where a man whose son had been on a life support system, his two-year-old son had been on a life support system for, um, I think, about a year. And he forced his way into the hospital at gunpoint to disconnect his son from the system. Uh, his name was Rudy Linares, and this is for him. When every breath wears a number, when every in and every out is tugged along by machines of practical gleam, of unerring silver, there is very little common love can do. It all boils down to being too big, too stupid, too illiterate, too clumsy, too Hispanic, to understand the relentless rhythms of high tech, but he understood the force drumming inside his son's chest. He understood its link to his own heartbeat. He understood only too well the losing that never stopped. So Rudy fought the world with his face. He denied the fists ticking behind his eyes while prayers turned his knees into hurting. It grew harder for him to click his John Q. public into place. He became one with shaking, his dreams fashioned by fever. In each dream, the dreaded greetings stopped and flowers opened. Every sound in the world stopped and color returned to his daybreaks. The machines groaned to a stop and flesh of his flesh was lifted. So on that morning, his sleep once again falling prey to the whitewashed downbeats, 
Rudy's flat red hands covered his face and he knew and he cried and he knew and he cried and he knew that every sleeping child was a scream on his closed lids. So Rudy moved close and finally listened to what he always heard. Please, Daddy, make it stop. <laughs>